Hi, I'm Kent. Recently I've been doing some experiments with my slip by adding some things into it to try and get a more interesting clay body. I was pleasantly surprised by one of my experiments that actually gave me an effect I wasn't quite looking for. In this video I'm going to build upon that surprise and see if I can take it a little bit farther. So what was the surprise? Well, it was actually this test tile here. These are the results from a previous video. I was exploring combining iron oxide with cobalt carbonate. This is a blend here starting with just iron oxide and getting more and more cobalt into it. I was going for a grayish type of slip and I pretty much achieved that with this second tile here. I think I want to do some more explorations. However, the surprise was just the iron oxide. This one turned out really nice. I'm pretty sure this is from the iron oxide that I mixed in. I didn't sieve it or anything like that, so I wind up with these little clumps. And I actually really like that effect. In this video, I'm going to set these aside and explore the iron oxide. In some previous videos, I made these where I was actually adding ingredients into my slip trying to get a speckled effect. And so creating it by accident was a pleasant surprise. These here have ilmite and rutile in them from a granular form mixed into the slip. And I think the stark contrast against the white just isn't quite right. So in this video, I want to explore playing with the ratios of iron oxide and then add in these ingredients as well to see if I can get a nice speckled slip. So the limited number of combinations I'm going to try out, I'm going to try just through teal, which are these two here. This is 2% by dry weight and this one's 4% by dry weight. And the iron oxide here is 4% by dry weight as well. So I'm going to get rid of these two. And we will try, I think I'll try lowering the iron oxide a little bit and then adding in different amounts of the rutile. I think this is probably useful to think about as a grid. This here is my regular slip. The top has been glazed in just a clear base glaze and the bottom is raw. Going this way, I added rutile. So this is 2% and 4%. So I gradually added more this way. And then going this way, I added iron oxide. And again, this one just has my clear base glaze on it. These I didn't glaze the top. So what we're gonna do is imagine this is a grid. So there's two cells here that I wanna fill in with iron oxide that has 4% and rutile with two and four. And then there's a middle column where I want iron oxide to be 2% and one with zero of the rutile another with two and another with four. So I'm gonna start mixing these up and filling in these, there's three here and two more here, five cells. To fill my test tile mold, I need about 100 grams of wet slip and that turns out to be about 70 grams of dry material. I want 300 grams of wet slip in here so I can mix up three different test tiles. So now I wanna bring up this whole middle column to 2% iron oxide by dry weight. With 300 grams of wet slip, there's 210 grams of clay in here. And I want 2% of that by dry weight to be iron oxide, so times 0.02. I want to add 4.2 grams of iron oxide into this. All right, to do that, I switch over to my high precision scale, and I got a glove because the iron oxide likes to stain. Okay, I've got that mixed up pretty well, and I just put together my test tile mold, and I want to get 100 grams of just the 2% iron oxide into here. All right, 98, we'll call that close enough. Okay, so now we have 200 grams of slip left in here, which is 140 grams of clay, and I want to bring that up to the 2% rutile. So we need to add 2.8 grams of rutile. All right, 2.79, I'll call that close enough. So that needs to go in here. So now this has 2% iron oxide and 2% rutile. Now there's 100 grams of slip left in here. That's at 2% iron oxide and 2% rutile. So to get it to 4% rutile down here with this one, I need to add another 2% rutile. All right, here is the first batch. So this column here has 0% iron oxide. This one will have 4% iron oxide. This one has 2% iron oxide. And then we have 0% rutile, 2% rutile, and 4% rutile, 0, 2, and 4. I don't have enough molds to do the next two right now, so I'm going to let these go ahead and set up, pull them out, and we will then do those. Yep. 
So I already have this tile, but I actually want to remake it because I want to put a different glaze on top. I'm going to glaze all of these with a different base glaze. So I went ahead and measured out a 300 gram batch, just like before. And now we need to get this up to 4% iron oxide. Same thing, I will let these sit, get the water out of the slip, form the test tile, and demold it. Okay, I pulled the other set out of the molds. These have been sitting overnight, so I went ahead and cleaned them up, took off the seams. The other thing I did is I scratched in some labels into the bottom, which you probably won't be able to read, but hopefully I can. I'm going to try and keep these straight, but as they go through the kiln, you never know. So I'm going to take this one away for right now, and hopefully the grid makes more sense. So these were the four I started with. This row here has 0% rutile, this one has 2%, this one has 4 and then going this way, this one has 0% iron oxide, 2% iron oxide, and 4% iron oxide. I'm gonna let these get all the way to bone dry. I will then bisque fire them all, and the next time you see them, I will go ahead and glaze the top half of these in my new base glaze. These I'm not gonna bother remaking, refiring. I already know that I don't quite like them, but they were useful tests to learn exactly what the rutile did into my clay. All right, so let's jump forward in time. And here are all the test tiles. These just came out of the bisque fire, and I went ahead and dipped them into this glaze. So this is Joe Thompson's first five base glaze. It has a little bit of titanium dioxide in it as an opacifier. So I put it on all the different test tiles. So these are just the iron, the iron with the 2%, and the iron with the 4%. And then these are the 4% irons, the 2% irons. I have a glaze firing coming up, so I'm going to go ahead and put these in, and then we will check them out. Here are the final results. These here are the base clay, 2% iron oxide, 4% iron oxide, and then these have 0 rutile, 2%, and then 4% rutile. So going down this way, we have more additives, and over here is just my straight up clay. And for comparison, this is my original test tile that sent me down looking in this direction. I think it's useful to compare these two first. So this one here is the first one I did, and one of the things I noticed is it actually has some speckles in it from the iron oxide that I added. This one here is the same percentage, so it's still 4%, but the speckling effect is a little bit more muted. And I actually got like some interesting streaks in here as well. I think there is a couple of factors here at play. I noticed when I was slip casting this tile, how I poured it into the test mold mattered. So if I ran it down the side of the test mold versus straight into the bottom, I would get some different effects. I think the variation I'm seeing then in some of my test tiles is actually how I've been pouring it. The other difference is the glaze itself. This is Joe Thompson's first five base with just the titanium dioxide in it, so it has a little bit of opacifier. And this one is the base glaze from my pottery shop, which is clear. I suspect if I remove the titanium dioxide, I would get a clear glaze as well. So there's some interesting differences there, not quite as speckled with the new test. And there's a, definitely a color variation going from the four to two percents. I think this one to me is probably too dark. I'm gravitating more towards maybe this one here with the 2% rutile, 2% iron, or maybe up here where I started with the 4% iron oxide and no rutile. You tell me, which one do you like the best? And I think with this, my test with iron oxides straight up are done for now. I'm going to sit and think about this for a little while and pick one, and then I'll probably start slip casting some pots in it and seeing how it plays around with the glazes. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them below. Thanks.